Hello students, let us continue our discussion on the Ovid story of metamorphosis and we were reading the story of Pentheus. In my last lecture, I was discussing on a particular kind of a conversation that was going on between Pentheus and his fellow men, the persons who were very much associated with Liber or Bacchus. And now Pentheus was very much angry regarding their activities and now Pentheus is to some extent scolding them regarding their activities and regarding their actions. After a prolonged or elongated lecture that Pentheus had given, he continued in the same fashion. Let us read the text. Pentheus continues, then Though wretched, we should be free from blame. That means there was a particular reference that if Thebes was fated to fall soon, how I wished that the gallant foemen were bringing down her walls with their engines of war. That means as we are the warriors. So if the future of our country was to find a battle, was to take part in a battle and if we lose that particular battle and our country was destroyed, then there was no kind of blame would be on our part because we were free from such kind of blame as we are in. So that's why he says that then, that means if we lose the battle, though wretched, we should be free from blame. Though our lot would be lamentable, there would be no need for concealment. That means we are the losers in that particular battle and so ultimately our lot, our fortune was lamentable, it is true. But there was no need for concealment. Why? Because, you know, it's a kind of a shame for us, we the warriors, to be associated with such kind of activities as you are in, in close proximity with Liber, completely engaged in the rites and rituals and to some extent the voluptuous pleasures that you are in. So he continues, therefore, so there was no need for concealment. Our tears would bring us no shame. But now the present condition, it actually brings the shame to us. But now, Thieves will be taken by an unarmed boy. You know, Liber is generally being considered here as unarmed. One who takes no pleasure in war. So there lies the problem within us. As we are the warriors, we are the kinsmen of the serpent's race. So ultimately, we had to fight a war, not completely being associated with these pleasurable accessories and so he says, but now thieves will be taken by an unarmed boy, one who takes no pleasure in war, its weapon and its cavalry. The terms that Ovid mentions here, the war, the weapons, cavalry, these are associated with the war field, obviously. And then he says, but delights in tresses, dripping with mere, mere is a kind of a, you know, it's a kind of a frankincense like element. Okay, it's a kind of a raisin actually. In fresh garlands, garments embroidered with purple and gold. So ultimately when I see that people are associated with mir and the fresh garlands of flowers and some garments, these are embroidered with purple and gold. So these are the attributes, these are the, the, the garments that they wear wearing at that moment. So somehow these are a kind of a mismatch that Pentheus is trying to propagate here. On this stand aside, I shall compel him forthwith to confess that he has himself invented this tale of a divine father, that his sacred rites are empty mockeries. So therefore he is indicating towards Acrisius. So ultimately here it says that only stand aside, that means you the people, 
who are directly taking part in Bacchus and Liber's festival, just stand aside, stand aside from such kind of activity and I shall compel him forthwith to confess. So who is this him? It might be possible that Pentheus is actually indicating towards Liber or maybe it can also be associated with the person who is the, the priest of Liber. Okay. The Aquatis. Okay. The name is Aquatis and we will come to that later. He says only you, the followers of Liber at this moment, my people, stand aside and I shall compel him forthwith to confess that he has himself invented this tale of a divine father, that his sacred rites, that means the sacred rites of Aquatis, these are simple empty mockeries. He says Acrisius had courage enough to despise his empty boast of divine power. So ultimately here in this particular reference you will find that Pentheus is mentioning a particular name. Who is Acrisius? You can find from here that in book 4 Acrisius is the king of Argos. He was the son of Abbas, who is the father of Denain. He, that is Acrisius, refused to admit Bacchus in his city. So ultimately, why you will find here that uh, Pentheus is referring to Acrisius? Because Acrisius was the person who refused to admit Bacchus in his city. Now, Pentheus wants to do the same, right? So therefore he says that Acrisius had courage enough to despise his empty boast of divine power. That means if you think in terms of Liber, if you think in terms of Bacchus, his boast of divine power, this is actually being associated with Liber and Bacchus himself. Just like the previous line where you can find the reference to uh, you know, confessing and he was, he has himself invented. So these terms, as I mentioned, can also be associated uh, with Bacchus or Liber himself. So therefore it says that Acrisius had courage enough to despise his empty boast of divine power. That means the boasting, you know, the boasting of divine power. Acrisius said that. And, and to shut the gates of Argos. Argos was the place where Acrisius was the king in his face. So ultimately, Acrisius had the potentiality, Acrisius had the power to shut his gates in the face of Liber or Bacchus. And will this new arrival frighten Pentheus and all thieves? That means I have an example of Acrisius who was successful in driving Bacchus or Liber away from, this, from his country. And if you think about me, I am Pentheus. I am King Pentheus. I have the power. I have the authority. I have the potentiality, right? So therefore, I will not be frightened, okay? Or I will not be frightened by this particular kind of thing. So therefore, he says that, and will this new arrival, that is the new arrival of Bacchus or new arrival of Liber, it frightened Pentheus and all thieves. So ultimately, you will find that it is a, a rhetorical question where it has been pointed out that when the question will be asked, the answer is mentally supplied to that. When Pentheus says that will this new arrival, that is the new arrival of uh, new arrival of uh, Liber or maybe Bacchus, uh, will it frighten Pentheus and all thieves? The answer is mentally supplied. No. That means Pentheus will not be made uh, or uh, made uh, frightened in this particular form. So therefore he says that and will this new arrival frighten Pentheus and all thieves? Go quickly. This order was given to his slaves. So therefore it says that now Pentheus is giving order to his slaves. Go and drag that leader here in chains. Who is the leader? The head priest actually. Okay. So therefore he says that go and uh, <coughs> go quickly and go and drag that leader here in chains. Waste no time in carrying out my comments. So what uh, Pentheus is actually aiming at that he will bring Aquatis, the chief priest or the head priest of Liber here and ultimately he will be punished and he will be asked to stop all these activities. You see? So that's why he gives his 
order to his slaves or to his people. He says, go and drag that leader here in chains. Waste no time in carrying out my commands. Now, what happens, you know, here some references have been, uh, or a particular kind of a description is being given. Here it is written that his grandfather, the name of the grandfather was Cadmus, you see, and Athamus, Athamus, that it has been pointed out here, the mother or so. So his grandfather and, uh, and Athamus, and indeed his whole family reproached and warned Pentheus. Now, certainly what happens, you know, as I have already mentioned, that, uh, that the fundamental focus of this particular text is the defiance. As I mentioned earlier, that whenever we read the particularization of a tragedy, then we find that a tragic hero is one, according to Aristotle, who is suffering from a particular kind of pride and also a particular kind of insolence. What happens, you know, the divine order, okay, we are the human beings and we do not have the potentiality to defy God or gods to be specific because he was pagan. And ultimately, when someone, that means some of the human beings, he becomes proud, he becomes insolent and defies God, then what happens? A uh, negative future is awaiting for him. So that is called the catastrophe. Okay, the nemesis will come and punish this particular person. So here also you will find that Pentheus is doing the same, right? In spite of all or every kind of, you know, the words that have been given by the grandfather, the other relatives who are actually providing warning to Pentheus, Pentheus was standing still, okay, because he was an insolent man. He was a proud man in the process of, you know, burying the Perth for Bacchus or Liber. So his grandfather and Athamas and indeed his whole family reproached and warned Pentheus. But vainly they tried to stop him. And then there is a, a symbolic representation has been given. Their warnings only rose him the more. That means they were trying to stop Pentheus. But as they were trying to stop him, Pentheus was becoming, you know, more angry and more active in his propositions. So therefore, it says that, uh, and vainly they tried to stop him, their warnings only rose him the more. And his mad rage, that is anger, was excited and increased by their attempts to restrain it. Okay, they were trying to restrain it. They were trying to restrain or stop Pentheus, but each of their activities, it actually actually rose the, the typical passion within Pentheus and Pentheus was becoming more angry, you see. So their very efforts to control him did harm. So now there you can find, it is a typical epic-like in, in references where you can find well, all particular actions of a human being, it has to be associated or related with the fundamental basics of the nature. And here also the same thing occurs. Here it says, so have I seen a mountain stream flowing smoothly downhill with gentle murmuring as long as nothing blocked its course. That means when we see a mountain stream, that means a stream that is flowing through the mountains, it flows smoothly downhill, okay, with a gentle murmuring sound. As long as nothing comes in its way or nothing blocked its course. But wherever trees or rocks obstructed it, you see, it foamed and boiled and made fiercer by the obstacles. So actually, here in this particular reference, you will find that Ovid, okay, he, he is actually make a comparison with Pentheus's wrath, that is Pentheus's anger. That means as long as nobody uh, tried to stop him, Pentheus was in a particular motion, but it was stable. But whenever he finds uh, obstacles from his relatives, from his men, then certainly Pentheus was growing fierce, you see. So that particular kind of comparison is a typical kind of a technique that is being used in, in these kinds of texts. 
Now, the band of slaves returned. That means the slaves who have been sent to uh, catch, you know, Aquitis, and now they are returned, all stained with blood, you see. That means it's a kind of a uh, problem that actually occurred. When their master inquired where Bacchus was, they declared they had not seen him. So ultimately, fundamentally, you will find that primarily the primary concern for Pentheus was to bring Bacchus himself. Okay, as I have already mentioned in my first lecture, that during that particular time, that actually being portrayed by Ovid in this particular text, or maybe the texts, uh, you, you find that somehow the human beings are gods, they have been related very closely, as if the gods were physically present in the midst of these personalities. So therefore, here you will find that Pentheus actually sent his men, sent his uh, you see the slaves to bring to catch Bacchus himself. But here, when they are returning, when Pentheus asked them uh, uh, the whereabouts of Bacchus, they declared that they had not seen him. But they say, here is one of his companions we have captured. And who is this companions? This is the priest actually who celebrates the sacred mysteries and. It is very probable and it is very clear to you that the priest who has been mentioned here, he is actually Aquitis. And they handed over a prisoner whose hands were bound behind his back. Right? He was, now the description of Aquitis, he was a man of Lydian parentage. Now you can find Lydia is a particular place that have been mentioned here. That means he is not to be considered as a person who belonged to Pentheus's kingdom. So, okay, or Pentheus's reign. So, therefore, it says he was a man of Lydian parentage and a follower of the god, that is Lyra. Pentheus looked at him, terrible anger in his eyes. He could scarcely bear to delay punishment for an instant because at the time Pentheus was, you know, completely being shattered to some extent. He was very much angry and he could scarcely bear the delay of punishment for an instant. He was trying to kill this man at any, any moment. However, he questioned the prisoner and said, you are on the point of death and by your death you will serve as a warning to others. So there it says that you are on a point of death and by your death you will serve as a warning to others. So you are on a point of death and I, I want to give you a fatal punishment, you see. Okay, because I want that this your death, it must be considered as an example to those personalities who are in the same way, you see. That means the persons who are defying God, the, the king's order, who are being associated with, you know, following Bacchus and so. So you are on the point of death and by your death, you will serve as a warning to others. Speak then, reveal your name and the names of your parents. Tell me where you were born and why you celebrate the rites of this new cult. So ultimately, these are the questions that have been asked by Pentheus to Aquitis. His name, about his parentage and what is the reason that Aquatis considers himself as the follower of Liber. So these are the questions that Aquatis actually answered. So ultimately, we are leading towards the another part of answer or another part of the text that is Aquatis' answers and why he is being associated with Liber. So we will continue this in our next lecture. Stay attached. Thank you.